Guys, I'm beyond excited to welcome the incredible Sinead Harnett to the podcast. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, everybody. <laughs> welcome, Sinead. Thank you. Hi. Oh my God, it is so amazing to have you here. I feel like I have been waiting for this moment to get you on the podcast. I feel like since we started, and it's been a while now, Sinead, so I feel really fortunate to have you here today. Thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? I know you must be in quite a bit of a bubble right now. Congratulations on your brand new album, by the way. It, you must be like loving life right now. Tell me everything. How are you feeling? Um... I'm feeling like that, like just too overwhelmed with um, gratitude. Like I just, it's felt like a really long um, time leading up to this. So mm. I just feel like now I can like slightly exhale, which is nice. Um, <laughs> I'm just really excited for what's to come from it. It's going to be so exciting. And I mean, the, what's already happened in this short space of time already since release has been incredible. I was saying to you off air, the kind of hype and buzz around this album has been incredible. So for anyone who doesn't know, you released Ready Is Always Too Late a couple of weeks back. And honestly, we've literally had it on repeat. I've had it on today listening to it. I've been obsessed with the Aww. album and I know that everyone in the studio is talking about it. I know that everybody at home is as well, but yeah, it must take so long to kind of create these kind of things to put this album together. So what is it like to finally release it to the world and see it go off and be like, there goes my baby? <laughs> Um, yeah, it feels it feels like um, you spend a lot of time like a baby nurturing mm. this thing that's not out yet. And um, there's times as well where you do think, what am I doing? And does this make any sense? And then it gets closer and closer to the time that it's going to come out and then s stuff starts to click. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm a mum of two because I've got two albums out now. And... Um, <laughs> This one is very, um, she's, I don't know. I feel like she's being received in a very good way. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased how, with how it's going. You should be, like I said, we are literally obsessing over it right now. And I think something I find interesting, I know that you've spoken before about your first album, Lessons in Love, and you kind of said, I think I heard you on an interview saying that it was kind of your life up until that point. So yeah. that's a you know that was that was a whole lot of time. So this one now, like, I wonder how long did this one kind of take to put together, and how does it feel kind of different to your first album? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. I think um, when you haven't released an album yet, it kind of feels like your whole um, you've got your whole life to pull from uh, mm. for it. And then for me, I just felt like this is only the beginning when I dropped that one. Um, and I was already in the thick of writing. So I just carried on. And I was like, I want to get another one out ASAP. I feel like we're in a generation now where music is so oversaturated. There's so much coming out mm. all the time that mm. it's actually okay to just keep pumping stuff out. I feel like it's a good way as well to just remind your fans like, hi, I'm still here. Um, so I just got straight into it. Literally, the album came out, the first one, and I was already planning the next um, songs that wow. were going to be on the second one. So I say, I'd say that this one differed because I had less time to think, which was good because I am a bit of an overthinker. Mm. Um, and I knew that I had a target to get it done by the beginning of this year. So I, it was almost like sifting through what was the gold to me and like, what should I let go just to keep it as high quality as possible, mm. you know? So it's like, it's a shorter album compared to some other artists, but um, it's just been very fun because I haven't been able to overthink it. That's so exciting, I think, to hear, you know, obviously, I think how I said it before, I imagine, I, you know, I'm not a singer, but I imagine that these albums must be like your children because, they're you, they're literally you in an audio file, in a CD and you know, whatever format you listen to it. So I think it's obviously such a huge thing. And one of the things that everybody's been talking about is of course the name and kind of, you know, I've seen so much praise around the name. I think Elton John shared it the other day. Well, he shared, he shared your album and he shared one of the tracks the other day. Um, yeah. But I read something about people talking about the name. So tell us a little bit about the name of the album and where that kind of all came from. So, the title track, which is the first track, is called mm. Radio Is Always Too Late. And um, I was in a bit of a 
funny situation where I was really feeling um, this guy's vibe. And I was like, yeah, this is special. Like, this is gonna go somewhere. And um, he felt not the same. <laughs> Like we've all been this, there we've all been there it was like this like <laughs> I guess it was like a rejection type song where mm -hmm. I thought it was something and he was just like yo like relax man <laughs> like, let's just um let's wait till we're ready for that and then that wow. was where that title came from and I I just I'd remembered so many situations where a guy has said you know let's just we're not there yet let's mm. wait until we're ready and then this theme of putting things off and using ready as an excuse just kind of presented itself as a theme throughout my chapter in, in my life right now. So for anybody who's not heard the album yet, could you try and describe it to us in three words? Uh, honest. Um, soulful. Mm. And... Um, Ready. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like ready. I love that. I feel like it's it's grown. I feel like Sinead had album one and this is album two and she's grown and she's here and she knows. It. I mean, you tell me whether you agree, but I'm like, I'm getting those vibes listening to the album fully. No, I, I agree. Like the first one, I think I was in a bit of a darker place and like I was figuring a lot of stuff out and finding finding myself. And then with this one, it's like, what do you do once you've learned those lessons in love? And like, once you start to look after yourself and take care of yourself, like what what happens once you're on the self-love journey? So I feel like there's a bit more of a um, knowing myself and self-assured energy mm. running through this one. Mm. And I feel like that's such a huge thing for like any young person, especially like women. I feel like we do go through um, kind of your early twenties into I I'm I'm nearly thirty now, and I feel a lot different yeah. from when I kind of was my early twenties. So do you feel that when you listen back to your old music, do you think like God, like do you remember that you know I was in this place back then, I was here, and and do you see kind of the transition and the growth yourself? Yeah, definitely. I think with music. Um... And this industry, I was never told, you must know who you are and you've got to project that out. And like, whenever people would say things like, just be yourself, just be confident. Mm. I would be like, that's so easy to say. And yes, that concept is so true. But if you don't know how to accept yourself, it's really hard to keep pushing yourself out there. And I think when I look mm. at the earlier years and like the things that I was going through with that first album and... Um, just feelings of like being very lost. I feel like coming to this place now where I've, I've trained myself almost. And you know, mm. when they say you have to have a thick skin in the music industry, I used to think it was like dealings, dealing with rejection or um, just dealing with like interesting characters, which obviously does happen too. But <laughs> I think I've realized now that it's just keep, keeping on putting yourself out there um, because there's parts to it that you feel a little bit like, oh gosh, do I need to talk about me again? And like, come and watch me mm. sing, come and listen to my music. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's working on the, the confidence to, to keep doing that. I think that is one of the challenges. Um, sorry, I've forgotten your question now because I went on a tangent. No, no, I love I love a tangent. And I think through that and through obviously listening to music, I think one of the things about, one of the things that I love about your music is how personal it is and how personal it feels. You know, obviously your listeners don't know you personally, but through your music, you can kind of learn a little bit about you. Do you ever get worried about putting kind of that much of your certain, I mean, I know that people obviously don't know the deeper meanings behind it, but do you ever like, feel scared about how it will be received. So like with this new album, with all the kind of personal tracks in it, do you, do you worry about how people will receive it? Um, are you into TED Talks? I've listened to a few. I feel like, do you know what? This year I've actually switched off a little bit, but I'm definitely into TED Talks. I've not heard any recent ones, but yeah, yeah I think they're, they're very, very good to listen to. Um, there was this woman that uh, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love and she did a TED Talks and it was mm. about um, how she had a lot of people coming up to her saying, oh, are you feeling nervous? How are you gonna beat Eat, Pray, Love? And then of course she got into a bit of a hole because she was like, 
yeah, how am I going to beat this? So then she started doing research and like finding out more about inspiration and like seeing that we are just like the vessel. And so we can't really judge mm. what we make. We can't think, oh, I'm the best in the world or I'm the worst in the world because we're just, we're, it's our job to show up and then like through showing up when the inspiration comes, whatever comes out is like not to be judged. And when I watched this and I'm not like a huge TED Talks like advocate, I'm not mm. like watching them every day. But when I saw it, I sent it to everyone that I have created with. Because wow. I was like, yeah, we, we shouldn't be getting so down in the dumps if we're not inspired one day or like mm. obsess over what's going to be my next thing. Because we're just like, I feel like we just flow with um, with our emotions and like when something beautiful comes out, great. And once I adopted that sort of way of thinking, I stopped over analyzing. So mm. yeah, it's gotten to a place now where I just try, I try my best and then I don't beat myself up because you spend so much time trying to recover from beating yourself up sometimes that there's no mm. time for creativity anyway. So it's just like a dog chasing its tail. 100%. I, th I think I definitely need to go and listen to that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Her name's Elizabeth. I'm going to go and listen. I can't remember her surname, but definitely watch I it. I feel like I, def I definitely know the book. I don't think I've actually read it and I do need to, but um, no, I completely get that. And I think that that kind of mentality of, you know, what are you going to do next is such a huge pressure that we all put, uh, put on ourselves in different aspects and different ways of life. So no, I completely get that. And I think it's, it's something I should definitely go and listen yeah, to. Yeah, do it. But how do you feel like the kind of past year has, you know, has that impacted the way you think or create? Because I mean, the, I say the past year, it's been maybe a year and a half now with everything going on with lockdown, the pandemic, all the kind of huge issues in the world coming to light, um, you know, more apparent than ever. Um, how has all that kind of impacted you and your creativity? I think that before 2020, I would work really, really, really hard but not necessarily smart. Like I would do mm. everything. I wouldn't get enough sleep. Um, I was never satisfied until I was exhausted like every day. Mm. Um, but was it, was I doing the right things? Probably not. I was just doing a lot of things. So I also am someone that finds it hard to say no to people that I care about. Um, so I would just do the most, as they say. I'd be mm. like, going to the studio for eight hours and then like making a dinner because if I didn't go to it, then I wouldn't see that person for another four weeks or whatever. And I was, yeah. I was really tired a lot of the time. So finally I just, it was me in my flat, um, getting to like research what was going on in the world and becoming more, like I was saying things like, this is about us and, and this is the we, this is an I, because we're all in this, like there's, like what is going yeah. on? There's so many cracks in the way that the world works. And so I would, mm. I guess with creativity, it made every time I create way more special because it wasn't just, you must write today because that's your job. It was like, oh no, there's, yeah. there's something really bad that's happened. Let me find out more about that. Let me use my platform, however humble it is to like share what's going on. So mm. it, I feel like there were more bite-sized chunks of like, really good creative spurts. And then if I wasn't in that place, I wouldn't force it. I'd then like, you know, activism, all of our active activism, mm. like sides to us were activated in 2020. And so 100%. it became more of a joy to create. And then I felt like the responsibility to find out what was going on and what continues to be going on in the world yeah. um, became, became more of a thing for me. I think I like I built confidence in even the people that I've collaborated with on this album. Like mm. we would just speak on DM or um, obviously we weren't running into each other because everyone was inside. So I just was, I don't know, I wasn't as scared to speak to these people because how else were we going to meet and like talk about mm. what was going on? And, you know, everyone was on Instagram live and it was like, whoa, this is a lot, but um, <laughs> it was definitely- Definitely was a lot. Yeah, it was good. It was very good for me, um, but obviously very sad as well for everyone. So yeah. Mm. It's definitely been a year and a, you know, a year and a half, like I say, of learning and adapting and definitely creating in different ways. So it's amazing to see that. I love that you said the, that you'd kind of- found new ways to reach out to people yeah. whether it be that you know these people that you collab with and you have collabed with some incredible people on the album thank you yeah I still can't believe it I still pinch myself 
No, they. I mean, I think they, they they would pinch their. I'm sure that they would be equally the same if I asked them. They would want to, you know, they'd pinch themselves from working with you. And I think the the collabs that you have done of just the match is brilliant. So congratulations on that. Now, back to kind of the personal note of the album. I wondered what song out of all of the songs on the album is most personal to you. Well, I feel like every song is like my child, so how can I choose? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, we can't have a favorite, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's too hard. And for me, I feel like my songs are just like pages of my diary, so I feel like they're all as personal. Wow. Um, I think maybe the hardest one to write was, um, was Hard For Me To Love You, just because I'd had mm -hmm. that for three years and just, I almost felt like it was too, close too sad to um mm. to put out but i sung it to someone in the studio and m phases and he was like he's australian he was like no there's no way we're not doing this like you have to release <laughs> this song otherwise you're an absolute idiot and then i was like oh okay <laughs> um, so yeah that was hard just because i felt i felt so sad about the situation that that was about but actually releasing mm. it and then talking to the person that was it was about was really healing so i'm glad that i did mm. i did add it in the end I love that it's been healing for you because I think something I was thinking there as you were saying, you know, it was hard for you to speak about and hard for you to kind of put out there. A lot of the times, you know, your fans and your listeners really connect to that because it is so real to you. Yeah. And I think I listened to that track straight away and I, you know, I'm one of them girls that I love an In My Feels track. Same. I like to have a little somber moment. Yeah. Um, so it was, it's, I think it's a perfect track to start the album with. Yeah. It's, it's a brilliant track. <laughs> now, I, I was going to ask you, um, for anybody who hasn't heard this track, do you think you could give us a little taster on the podcast? Um, yeah, I don't know what key it is, but. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, honestly, I have got no music knowledge whatsoever. So maybe maybe if it, if it's not that track, maybe a little something else, like one of the other favorite tracks, maybe. I mean, like we said, they're all kids. They're all your favorites. But they are. if maybe it's not that track, could we have a taster of something else? Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm a Libra. <laughs> so decisions are not the one for me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we I'll can just always do come that back one. to I'll it. I'll just do a bit of that one. So let's do it. Should we sing it together? Do you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, honestly, Sinead, I've got a bit of bad history with doing this on the podcast. I'm not going to ruin it for you or for the listeners. But you they're going to be like. <laughs> before. Well, um, I don't know if you're familiar with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of weeks back, we did a, a podcast and I had a, a go at rapping. Um, to oh. a very famous verse. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna find it. I can't wait. You'll never look at me the same way again. If we ever meet in person, you'll be like, oh my God, it's that girl, oh, it's that girl. It. <laughs> You're getting ready. It just goes, you make it hard for me to love you. That's like a bit of the chorus. <laughs> in the studio, guys, I've just nearly cried. <laughs> Honestly, like your music is actually so emotional. Like I knew that when I heard it for like, I mean, I'm really privileged guys and everybody listening, you're so privileged to hear that live. Like, thank you oh, very much. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm gonna do a whole Honestly. concert for you guys soon. Honestly, you are actually, that's yeah. exciting guys. There's something really <laughs> exciting coming after this podcast that Sinead's working on, especially for PLT sound yeah. sessions. I'm, also, it's my a really outfit's busy day. so cute. They're gonna see my whole outfit on it as well. Oh wait, okay, we're so ready. For, we'll, we'll keep it for that, we'll keep it for that. We'll get okay. all the tea here today and then we're gonna keep the outfit for the sound session because you ain't ready, listeners, okay? I'm not ready, I'm gonna cry. I've lost my train of thought because <laughs> I'm stunned. <laughs> no, but honestly, thank you so much for doing that. I know we put you on the spot there, so we really no, do appreciate it. I now going it. back to, I, I mean, we love it, we love it. <laughs> going back to, um, you know, collaborations. So you've worked with some incredible people on this album, but we wondered, is there any artists out right now that you're really inspired by or that you hope to kind of work with in the future? Or what's your dream collab even? I am obsessed with so many artists. Um, like I make, I make a playlist, um, I have a playlist on Spotify and it's called Ready is Always Too Late Mood right? Because these are just Ooh. like feels type songs that remind me of my like feels album. Um, but Jasmine Sullivan, absolute oh, oh, queen. queen. Yeah, you She's know amazing. It. She's the best. Her, her voice has so many different textures to it. Mm. It's like a haberdashery shop. Like I'm just done. Um, and then <laughs> Scissor, I love um, her, Frank Ocean, James Blake, 
Pharrell. Mm. I, w- I would collaborate with all of these people in a heartbeat. Oh. Um, Jojo, I was obviously listening to when I was like a kid and- Same. She's now like, even with this album, like I've been posting about it a lot, obviously, because got to plug yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the other day she put on her story, please go and listen to my girl's new project. And I'm just like, how has she become my girl? Like what is going on? I've literally grown <laughs> up on her music. Um, wow. So yeah, I'm just a fan of so many. And the people that I collaborated with as well, like Masego, you mm. know, Earth Gang, Van Jess, Lucky Day. There's just too many. I could, I probably could talk for four hours about who I love. <laughs> but like I say, we love, we love the collaborations that you have on the new album. And I can't wait to see what the future holds, if there are going to be any more collaborations. You know, I mean, not that we're putting pressure on the next whatever, because that's not what we do here. You know, we are, we are obsessed with what's out right now. And I, and just, yeah, we're loving what you're doing. Thank you so much. Now, so right now, for anyone who can't see us, Sinead, you're in LA and you moved yes. over to LA like a year ago. Is that right? Yeah, I was supposed to move in, um, I think it was March 2020. Mm. And I've never, ever had the guts to move uh, country before. And so the one time I decided to, the world literally was like, no one's going anywhere. So settle yourself. Um, (laughs) So I was just indoors till August. So August 2020, I went and did the quarantine in Antigua because I was like, if I'm going to be on my own for 14 days, I need to be next to a paddleboard. (laughs) <laughs> and um, some tequila. So I did that. Uh, yeah, so it's been, it will be a year this August, but I went and did a big chunk at home recently because I've got like quite a lot of babies in my family and I just can't deal with life without them, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's gotta be hard when you're away when people like your family members are having kids and things and missing those guys. Yeah. And those moments. I'm but an, so how, go on. I was just gonna say, I'm an auntie that like thinks she's their mum. I'm obsessed. <laughs> but don't you think when people in your family start having kids and especially, I mean, I don't have kids, but when my like close friends have got kids now, I'm like, I am so, I like them more than you. Yeah. You know, 100%. that's how I feel. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh, I'm going to come and see you. And then if the kid isn't there, I'm like, why have I come here? Where's, this is the main reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of my time. <laughs> So how has it been being in LA, you know, whilst you have been through, you know, what we mentioned before, through the kind of pandemic and everything that's been going on and writing your album, how has it been being over there? I feel really, really lucky because um, although I loved the fact that for the first time I could put myself first, which, Mm. you know, even in things like now we couldn't go anywhere, I spent so much time alone in my flat in London that I really got to know myself and and start to like not hate the person, well not hate, that's a strong word, but you know that Mm. we kind of, after a while, especially in the pandemic, Mm. we're spending so much time alone, gets to the point where you see your reflection and you're like, oh, you again. Oh yeah. You know? (laughs) And so I I don't know, I just, I learned that I'm quite, what I did, I learned how to appreciate my idiosyncrasies and my, all my weirdness and like Mm, mm -hmm. put that out there and be proud of it, which I think, doing what I do is a good thing because we want to encourage our fans to to do that and to like be proud to be in the skin that they're in kind of thing. Yeah, 100%. So, so from doing that, by the time I got to America, I'd like, I was kind of sick of the four walls of my flat and was able to go to the studio again. And you know, London went in and out of lockdown, mm. um, well the UK did. So it was yeah. just a huge privilege to be able to finish an album, see like the sun shining, um, over here and make new like friends in the in the music world like not necessarily industry but like musicians that I'd always wondered what what would it be like to work with them um so I just was really pleased and like I've been grafting at this for a long time so it kind of felt like oh okay like this has been worth it because this is a great a great vibe right now mm-hmm. I'm so glad to hear that and I was wondering, you know, when I was kind of going through the notes for this for this podcast and, you know, thinking about what we were going to speak about today, I was thinking, where does Sinead go when Sinead wants to write? Like, what, like, is there like a particular place or is it kind of, you you know, how does it all come about? Um, what's really frustrating is a lot of ideas that I get come when I'm just about to fall asleep. So like, mm. I'll pick up my phone and do a little voice <laughs> memo. There's probably 
eight albums in my voice memos oh. that I just haven't like addressed yet because there's no time. But yeah, I, I normally wait for the feeling to write the song. Like I can't really, mm. um, I can't go to, the, I find the whole thing of going to a studio and then being like, right now I'm going to write such a, such a weird contradiction because mm. you can't really just switch it on. So what I try and do is just wait for like, something to happen in my life and that inspires me and then I'll be like I have to write about this um so yeah very autobiographical and very emotion led mm. I think everybody listening would love to hear these voice notes I think one day we might have to crack <laughs> them out on a tv show or something or maybe get you back on the podcast that would be like, such a good idea to like like on a show like Saturday Night Live where you have to get out your phone and mm-hmm. and and choose your last voice memo and just write a song on the spot I want to do that. Wait, let's put Should that we in the universe. That? Should we start Let's that just stop, right? PLT, can we commission a TV show, please? I mean, I'm ready. Sinead's ready. I'll be the we've host. Already, yeah, we've host. already got it. We be the, <laughs> you need to sing. You need to, because I can't sing. I bet you can, or you can do the rap. Oh, honestly like I was thinking about it today because I was thinking about y- your voice is I mean I don't know music terms so please just ignore anything <laughs> wrong I say here but you're like I what I would think in my head like range is just insane like and what what is that TikTok where Sinead where, where, Sinead, where you're going what is this song we were listening to it before was it unconditional because they was it like I feel- if we can make it make it is that one? You you put you put no. I feel like it's an old song. Oh, wait, wait we la, listened la, to it before. La, 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 la. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you do the bit at the end, and I was like, I was I was gonna that say was like, so do you know, bad. That was not good. I was like screeching that note out. Listen, if that's your bad, then I may as well just get off here because <laughs> honestly, we're, we're not gonna try it, guys. But no, yeah, it's, singing's not for me. <laughs> I actually could teach you how to do it. It's it seems hard, but it's just like. It's literally, yeah, I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm getting hot thinking about it, like, <laughs> honestly. They call it whistling, don't they? Like, Mariah Carey's literal weapon is her whistle register. Wow. Yeah, it definitely is. I feel like you've definitely got that too, because that video, I was like, I can't believe that you said that wasn't good, because, wow, yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to work on it now and perfect it and then perform it for you. Well, when we start this TV show, whoever's going to commission it, you know, you're listening right now, who, anyone in the room that wants to commission this, Uma Kamani, the boss, anybody, <laughs> let's do this. Um, it's going to happen. I'm going to go to him and tell him Sinead wants a TV show, so we better do it. And yeah. I reckon I reckon we'll pull some out of the back there. Yeah, let's do it. 100%. But so, so through kind of, you know, lockdown and through writing your album, I think we've kind of touched on it in a sense. And I think, you know, a lot of people learned a hell of a lot about themselves mm. or what they wanted in life or, you know, all these different kind of aspects. I think it really put life into perspective for people, especially yeah. did for me. So I wondered what did you learn most about yourself through, you know, the pandemic, everything that was happening and writing this huge, um, huge album? Before the pandemic, I just, I tried to, I think I just wanted to be cool and like I I would look at other artists and be like oh they're very cool so I should be cool Mm. and then I realized from probably having too much time to myself like in 2020 that's when I made my first TikTok and when I started doing way more personality-ish type things whether it was like sharing sharing with my fans that like I had a plumbing issue and that this plumber had come around (laughs) and um bless him he wasn't Brad Pitt, but there was a part of me that was like, shall I just marry James the plumber? Because when am I gonna meet anyone? Because we can't go out right now. Um, Or whether it was like me doing stupid accents and like, from doing that, I realized actually, no, I shouldn't try and be cool. We shouldn't try and Mm. be anything. We just have to be ourselves. And I know that I said that that's not always easy, but I think finally having the time to like, take care of myself and like, explore sharing those different parts of me showed me that the only thing that well the thing that was unique about me is I am a bit weird and a bit um of a clown and I think my fans started to get to know me so then they were like Mm. okay we love her music but we actually love her as well and then you know you Mm. meet you you find new audiences from showing those different sides so the biggest lesson for me was don't compare myself. Like no, none of us should be comparing ourselves. We should only be comparing the older, the, the younger versions of ourselves to where we've yeah. got to now. Um, 
So it was kind of like a celebration of of um, just owning who I am and and wanting my fans to feel like they they could do that too. Because with the first album, it was all about how do we love ourselves? How do we like mm. start this journey or maintain this journey? And then leading up to the album, I think I actually did start to like and celebrate myself. So that tone came out in the energy of it. Mm -hmm. So I think they're two really important lessons that you know you're putting across there in your albums and your work because I think like you've said it, it's it's sometimes easier said than done to love yourself yeah. or to kind of you know accept yourself but it's such a huge message and I do feel like kind of what I said before for me especially I kind of got to a, f a stage in my life where I was like okay and it, it was you know growing up a bit and getting a bit older where I realized so I'm so glad that you're kind of putting that message out because it's such a great message for your fans and especially like your younger audience to really you know resonate with and hopefully one day learn themselves yeah definitely and I think um I was just gonna say for me I've always worn my heart on my sleeve in this industry because mm. even the beginning of it it was like Wiley started tweeting a song that I'd just sung and written from a YouTube beat and I, I'd made a YouTube account and then it was like, oh, so now I have to be an artist who knows themselves because now there's like, I don't yeah. know, industry eyes on me. And then I went on the um, collaborative journey, like Disclosure, Rudimental. I didn't really need to find myself because mm. I was doing what I do on their wave. Um, yeah. And I guess the point in, in what I'm saying is like, I feel like I'm an artist that would rather just be real and be like, it was a hard road. It, it wasn't easy because... I think finding yourself as a human is one job and it's a long job. And then you can't mm. really be an artist till you've done that work. And in an ideal world, it would be like, I would have known who I was. I would have had all the confidence, um, you know, had that Amy Winehouse, like, no, I will not do anything that you tell me to do attitude. <laughs> um, and it would have been a dream, but I think everyone's journey is different. And that's something that I had to remind myself of um, with this mm. album, because when I look at people like Jasmine Sullivan, Solange, that have just been around for years, reinvented themselves and like had their moments, it, it really inspired me mm. to keep going because there's so many reasons that artists want to quit and want to stop because it's mm -hmm. not a um, it's not a simple road, but then, you know, I don't know, we're on it. <laughs> So we carry on and we're obsessed. That's it. That's it. And the magic's in the journey, I think. Like obviously sitting and listening to your journey and kind of watching it grow as well it is is incredible as a fan and as an outsider. So I'm sure that all your fans and everybody listening can completely, um, you know, will enjoy what you're kind of saying there and just enjoy hearing a bit more about your journey more personally. But as well, something you said, you know, before you were talking about like how you're kind of getting, your, you've got your personality more out across social media. And I definitely agree with that. I think one of my favorite TikToks, I have to mention, I think one of my favorite TikToks and some of the things you're doing at the minute is about your relationship with your mum. Like, I love that. Oh. I'm, I'm learning so much about you. I'm oh. learning so much about you. You put one out recently and it really, it was really good. It really made me laugh. But, it, but you know, it does just let your fans and, you know, your followers inside to your life a little bit more and go, okay, yeah, that, you know, that's, that's, that's Sinead. That makes sense. And I think it's a cool thing to do. And it, like you say, it's great because it's you. It's about you. It's, you know, true and honest to who you are. Yeah. The mum thing's hilarious because... There are so many, I never spoke about my family um, other than in songs and I, people would always think that they yeah. were romantic, but there are were, there were a lot of songs that were inspired by just different complexities in my family relationships as well. But I felt a bit like with my, cause my mum is obviously Thai, sharing that mm. side was quite important to me as well because I hadn't, through trying to find myself over the years, I hadn't mm. really tapped into my, ethnicity and taken ownership of it as much as I am now and there's that's mm. partly because I'm getting to know myself and also there's a layer to it where representation is just so important and if if you are from somewhere different why not fly your flag because I know when I was growing yeah. up I wasn't seeing um east southeast asian women as like protagonists in films or um in the mm. western music world and like it's also AAPI month um, over here in America. Um, and it's just been so fun to like, there are such funny sides to the Thai culture, like, and, and the way that 
Asian parents bring up their kids, there is a comedic side, you know, to the fact that mm. there is no way more right than theirs. Even if they're wrong, they're right, you know. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that you liked it because um, I don't know. It was like, I remember the first time I did an impression of her, I was like, oh, people are going to think that I'm, I've lost it. Like, why is she dressed up as a mum? No, um, <laughs> no, I'm here for it. I'm here yeah. for it. I, I want to I meet your mum. If anything, I want to meet your mum. She sounds like a great lady. Well, yeah, she. There's a lot of sides to her, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all. I think we'll all. We'd all say that about family for sure. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we'd all say that about like parents that they kind of um, think they know best. But one of the other TikToks, well, one of the other trends on your TikTok channel that we're all quite enjoying right now is there's there's a little bit of a a personal maybe maybe partnership going on on TikTok right now. <laughs> Let's sh should we. Should we talk about dating, Sinead? I feel like let's talk about love. Let's talk about love. So we are obsessed with these these TikToks right now. And it's like, um, sing to your partner to see their reaction. One, we need to know everything. Wow. Two, I need to know if the reactions are real. Let, let's just go there. Let's just go there. I'm going to give the floor to you. Do you have a kettle? Because this is a very tea spilling moment going on here. Let, <laughs> let's, let, let's get a cup of tea, guys. Oh, what do I say? I'm ready. I'm not prepared. Um... Hmm. Yes, I love unpreparedness. Ah! That's the great. <laughs> That's when you can catch us out. <laughs> yeah, I um there's a special person, um, uh, I'll say that. And um we just I don't know, basically these two girls were um listening to Unconditional, <laughs> the acoustic version, which is an older song of mine. And then um I happened to see it and then be in my car with this special someone. And I was like, come on, let's do a reaction video, man. Like this is this is going viral. Let's do our version. So I just um, pretended that because I used their audio. So it's a girl singing to her friend. Got you, got you. Um, and then he he genuinely was just like, okay, well this makes me feel emotional. Let me show some emotion. Let me show some tears. Um, and then it just we just carried on doing those videos because people seemed to like it. And like people would say things like, protect this man at all costs. Um, mm. He really loves mm -hmm. her. I mean. I won't say anything. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I, I, I know that all your fans are going to be screaming right now because I feel like, yeah, I'm there with them. I'm obsessed with the videos and the reactions. Like, So are the reactions, like, because I actually can't make it out. They are so sweet, but are they his honest, like raw reactions in that moment? Please say yes. It, it brings us so joy, that so much joy that people think that they're real but he is not actually crying, I'm sorry. <laughs> like people have commented like, how could she laugh at the end when he's being so vulnerable in front of her? She's so mean. No, he's just like, he's amping up the emotional response. To, I love it, Yeah, I love it. I love it, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like it's one of those reactions, like because it is obviously a funny video that I was questioning it because it was so good at the same time. I was like, no, maybe that's just how he cries, you know? Oh. Let's give him, let's give him. I do think that but I'm sometimes when I, when I sing, it does make people feel emotional. I'll, I'll give him that, but mm -hmm. um, no, mm -hmm. he's not, he doesn't just cry on cue like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you, you seem definitely happy and I, you know, wish you guys all the best and <laughs> yeah, keep, keep posting these videos. I'm excited to see more. Okay. We love seeing into your life. All right, we'll do some more <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> And okay, so one of the things you've not been able to do over the past like kind of year or so is touring and live performances. So with the new album, with everything going on, can we expect any tours, any live shows coming up? In terms of touring, I will say, again, with my mysterious tone adopted from the last question, <laughs> um, that <we're, laughs> a tour is in the works. So please yes. stay tuned. Okay, well, we look forward to that. And I know that everybody right now will be very excited about that. And off your new album, what song would you look forward to most about to, about, to perform? To I, perform. I kind of messed up my question there, but- You know how, how the album tracks are my babies? I'm obviously excited to perform mm. every single one, but I normally have like a hot flavor of the day song. And at the moment, or of the week, at the moment, I'm really feeling obvious. It's got a bit of tempo mm. and- um, yeah, I'm excited to perform that. I feel like that one's like my um, 
I don't know if we're allowed to swear, but it's like my somber, you can swear. somber like fuck girl song. Cause I'm in that yes. song, I've never sung a song where I'm like, look, I shouldn't be doing this. It's just cause I'm feeling a bit lonely. Like I'm always <laughs> the one that's like, no, they're, they're trying to take advantage of me. But in this one, I'm like, look, this, I'm mm. not feeling this. So why am I doing this kind of thing? It's like an admission to myself that I mm-hmm. need to fix up and, and stop giving in just when I feel sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to do that one because I feel like it will be one where people might dance a bit in the audience and mm. I might throw mm. a few moves down. So. Oh, we're ready for them. We're ready for them. And the, and the, like the, I was going to say like the concert, the, like the looks, I can't wait to see what kind of looks you pull up on stage. It's going to be very, very exciting when you do. So we'll all be looking out for that for sure. Oh, the looks, as we say, L-E-W-K. The looks, <laughs> the looks. Mm-hmm. We're ready for them. We're going to, yeah, I'm very, very ready for them. And last, last note on the kind of personal side there, you know, about kind of touching on what we were speaking about before. Are any of the songs in the album from your personal love experiences kind of right now? Yeah. I think that, um, you know how I said it's like my diary. Every single song is based on something real. Obviously not all of them are romantic. Um, but yeah, there's, there's one that's about the current situation. Hey, for anyone that can't see me right now, I'm pulling all kinds of faces. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so are you going to leave us guessing for that one? Do we need to go away and guess? Yeah, I have feel a like guess. Should... It'll be fun. And then I'll let you know if Let's you're right. Let's have a guess. I'm going to come back to you, Sinead. Okay. Now, I've got a special part of the podcast. I've got two very special parts of the podcast. Thank you so much for everything so far. I am literally loving this. Oh, same. Now, we've got... We've got a little bit of a game. Well, we've got two games, really. First of all, we let our followers know that you were coming onto the podcast today. And because you're a bit of a love guru, they sent in some relationship questions. Oh my gosh, so this I is love, called, I love this. Yes, yes. This is called Lessons in Love, which I feel like could be a... Wait, that's... New, wait, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, that's a, that's an album title right there, yes. guys. That, that makes sense, guys. That, is that my, makes complete yeah, sense. So, that, <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> Well, what is it when the uh, when the penny drops? The penny's just dropped for now. Okay. So this is the first question. Are you up for helping these girls out? I am definitely. I, I, I'd love to be Perfect. a love guru. Let's go. You are a love guru. Okay, let's do this. So now that dating is allowed again, I feel like I should be making more of an effort, but I don't feel ready. How do I get back in the game? Ooh, I like that Ready one. is always too late, boo. You don't need to wait till you're ready. Get out there, look at you, you're fine. Um, I would say, yeah, don't wait till you're ready. Just, you know, do whatever it is that makes you feel good about yourself. Whether it's doing a face mask four hours Mm. before getting out there again. You know, putting on your favorite dress or your favorite sneakers, if it's it's sneakers that you wanna wear to the day. And then I always like to say to myself when I'm gonna meet someone new, I'm just meeting a friend, no pressure. Mm. We might vibe, like that. we might not. Because as soon as we're like, oh my gosh, we're we gonna fancy each other. Is he gonna like me? Then it's just just like too, too much, much pressure on yourself. Yeah. So just like going to meet a friend looking cute. Love it. Okay. And <clears throat> I'm finding it hard to move on after my last relationship. We've definitely all been in that situation. Yeah. Any tips? Um, moving on is like is like losing someone. Um, so it's Hmm. almost like mourning. Uh, so I would say that time is really is the healer. Um, keeping busy, doing as much as you can to like fill your days. Um, and also just accepting that it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel Mm. really, really shit for a long time. But after a while, kind of like when you go on a hike before you know it, you're at the top of the mountain and you're actually about to go onto the other side of like getting over someone. So just keep going. Wow, I really like that. Is that like, I was gonna say, I like that analogy. That's an analogy, yes. is that an analogy? Yes. I really like that analogy. I feel like I've never actually heard that before. I thought you were gonna say, do you know what I thought you were gonna say? Like, you know, when you're going a really long hike and your legs hurt, eventually they stop hurting afterwards. No, that's true too. I, Yeah, but yours is so much more <laughs> like insightful and grown and I'm here for it. So I hope that answers your question to the person that sent that in. I love that. Um, and the final question is, I've met someone I really like and I feel like it's moving very mm-hmm. fast. It feels natural, but should I slow it down? That's an interesting one. That's a really good one. Um, I think that our gut will always guide us. 
So mm. if it feels like it's going too fast, then there's nothing wrong with being honest and just being like, wow, we're really getting on. Maybe we should be a bit more selective about how much time we're having together just because we don't want to potentially ruin it by doing too much. Mm. But if your gut is like, it's going fast, but it feels right, then just enjoy it, embrace it. But also I've always had friends say to me, save a little bit for yourself. Like we don't mm. ever want to feel like we need to depend on someone else to feel happy or to feel whole. So like, I always try and do stuff on my own as well. Like even if it's as small as, yeah. as like making sure that I'm getting my exercise routine and I'm doing that on my own or getting in my meditation, just so that we don't mm. ever feel like we need someone else. Yeah, 100%. Like never losing who you are in the process of kind of being with someone else. Yeah. I love that. I relate to that. I was going to I was gonna actually ask you to kind of end round that one off. What is the best kind of relationship advice you've ever had? But I feel like that is a very good piece of advice. Yeah. And just like we are all whole. We're not halves <laughs> that need another half to become yes. whole. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. 100% I love that okay now the next game is really exciting Sinead and it is I know that you've got a hard you've got to be out soon so we're going to wrap up really really quickly but the last game the last game games. is a really fun game okay this is a really fun one and it really puts you to the test okay? okay so obviously we've spent so much time obsessing over your music but we wanted to know a little bit like what you said before we wanted to know what is on your playlist depending on what kind of mood you're in or what kind of day you're having okay. so I wondered it if I can give you a vibe, could you let us know what kind of playlist or what, sorry, what song you would play in that situation or that yes. scenario? I love this. Okay, let's yes. do it. So, so, so I want you to sing that song to me okay. for each one. Do you think you can do it like that? Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm okay, up for being ready. A jukebox. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so a big one right now for the UK girls, for the UK boys out there is getting ready for June 21st with the girls. June 21st is the first day of summer. Is that right? Like the first full day of freedom. And oh, yeah, it's the first big, like for lockdown. That was so I should have explained dim. that to you. You've been in LA for- Okay. No, you've been in LA for a while. All right. This is going to be a plug, shamelessly. June 21st is one month since my album dropped and it is the first day of freedom. So we are going to blast my entire album. Okay, that's what we're getting ready to today, girls. That's what we're getting ready to, honeys. Okay, everybody go and put that on on June 21st. Now, this is the interesting one. It's battling the hangover the next day. Ooh. Okay, battling the hangover the next day. We need to play some Bob Marley, okay? Because we need to remember, every little thing's gonna be all right. You know? <laughs> and when you hear that voice, it just feels like everything is gonna yeah. be all right, guys. You know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> need to throw up, but it's gonna oh. be okay. But it's going to be all right. Have a bucket by your bed, bottle of water on the side. It's all good. It's all good. You'll manage. <laughs> okay. This is a nice one. And I love this kind of vibe. So driving at night. Ooh, driving at night would be House of Balloons by the weekend. Featuring songs such as, um, tell me you love me only for tonight, which is called Wicked Games. Yes. Amazing song. <laughs> I love, I love that you chose that song. It's a fantastic song. It's okay. so good. Ama I love The Weeknd. I love the, And I love that kind of era of his music too. Yeah. So this is a good one. Everybody sings in the shower, you know, rightly or wrongly. What's your go-to shower song? And I'm singing these, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Go-to shower song at the moment would be um, Pick Up Your Feelings because she, Jasmine Sullivan is the queen of my life. Um, don't forget to come and pick up your feelings. <laughs> just because I, I just can't stop singing that song. Wait, guys, I, I wasn't ready for that. Ooh, okay, that was, that, was, that was amazing. Okay, and the final one, the final one, I know you've got to go, so the final one is karaoke with your bestie. What are you doing, Sinead? Ooh, um... Well, sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water. Just because who doesn't <gasps> sing that when they're drunk? Okay, who doesn't do. sing that when they're drunk? 
I've definitely been there. Well, Sinead, honestly, that was <laughs> the best ending to a podcast I have ever, ever had. And no. I know that everybody in the studio right now is literally like, <laughs> ever, no, ever. Sorry, everybody else. I'm really sorry, but that was something special. And I'm going to remember that forever. So wow. thank you so, so much. Thank honestly, you. it's been a dream. You're the best. I know that all of our listeners are going to be absolutely buzzing with this. So congratulations again on the brand new album. Go out and enjoy all of the great, amazing things that are coming and that are happening right now. And yeah, thank you for joining us on the PLT podcast. This has been so special. Oh, it's been amazing. It's been a therapy session. It's been a karaoke vibe. Thank you for having me, everyone. (laughs) Thank you so much, Sinead. Thank you to all of our listeners. This has been PLT Behind Closed Doors, starring the amazing Sinead Harnett. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave us a little review and make sure you come back next week for another amazing episode. We'll see you all soon. And that's us. Yay.